things in our lives that make us wonder about his presence and his protection. Now, we may not send someone to verbalize the question, are you the one or should we expect another? But in the secret times in our hearts and in those quiet places when no one else is looking, only us and God, we ask those questions. Lord, I thought you were the one for my life. Should I expect another? These are dangerous times, for these are times when the devil is working his tempting and testing. See, the devil wants you to begin to believe that there are reasons to doubt God. You know, he, he starts with those occasions when you do something where, where he, he whispers in your ear, he says, boy, that was really bad. That was really bad. Not even God can forgive that one. And then he moves on. He moves on to those those times when when we begin to to wonder if the wait has been so long that maybe God has forgotten. See, these are the mind, these are the thoughts that creep into the minds of those who wait. When we deal with those questions, it is important for us to look at this text and see how Jesus deals with this question. Jesus deals with this question not by going into a fire and brimstone rant. He doesn't say, what's wrong with you? I thought I taught you better than that. No. In fact, he says nothing at all. He simply proclaims with actions. He says, in that hour, he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on those who were blind, he bestowed sight. And he gave them the answer. He says, go tell John what you've seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news preached to them. You see, God gave waiting Israel sure signs of Messiah. He gave them the sign of a virgin who would conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. He gave a sign of Bethlehem. He gave all kinds of signs, too, that when the Messiah was here, there were certain things that would happen. And those Old Testament images that Jesus uses to convince John in prison that he is who he says he is are right there. The Old Testament is replete with, uh, of, of signs that says, you know Messiah is here. When? The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Those signs were there. And wouldn't it be great if those signs would be here today? Wouldn't it be great if somebody would get their sight back or or, or have a palsied limb made whole or even to have their death conquered? Well, I'm not like one of those TV evangelists. There's a very good possibility that if you have macular degeneration, you're not going to be healed today. That if you walk with a crutch, you will likely not be made whole today. If you are dead, you will likely not be made physically alive today. But I can tell you one thing. One of those signs is still here. The good news is preached to the poor. Now, as I survey the audience here this morning, I don't know what's in your checkbook. I don't know what's in your 401k. I don't want to know. The truth is, there are some of you that God has blessed very richly. And yet, statistically, we are told there are also some of us here who are up to their eyeballs in debt. preaching of the good news to the poor has nothing to do with your financial situation. It has everything to do with your spiritual situation. As Jesus would say in the Gospel of Matthew, blessed are the poor in spirit. To be poor in spirit is to be aware of your sin. 
to confess with confidence that you are a poor, miserable sinner. Of that, we are. Everyone in this room, when they are honest, when they gaze into the mirror of God's law that is the Ten Commandments, knows and confesses that they are indeed poor in spirit. And God has brought you here this day so that you can yet again hear the good news preached to the poor. For this Jesus is the one. He has come for us. The wait is almost over. The wait is almost over because we know Christmas is coming and God in human flesh will invade creation He will be the child wrapped in swaddling clothes. He will be the man who grows in wisdom and stature before God and men. He will be the man who goes to the cross to die, to lay in a tomb and be be raised again for poor, miserable sinners just like us. And in the process, spiritually, the dead will be raised. The eyes will be opened and hearts will sing for joy, for we have been redeemed. My friends, the wait is almost over over. He brings you here to this house week in and week out to hear this gospel again. As Pastor Canippa just announced a moment ago, your sins have been forgiven. Your wait is almost over. In just a few minutes, he will bring you up yet again to put in your mouth the very sweetness of the gospel under bread and wine you will receive jesus himself what for the forgiveness of sins my friends your wait is almost over and as each day passes we know we draw nearer to christmas but we also know we draw nearer to that final advent When the presence of our Lord will not be in word or wafer and wine, no, the presence of our Lord will be face to face, and in great joy we will sing our hosannas, for we know that our wait is almost over. And yet, we grow impatient. So he brings us here for those little morsels those little daily gifts on that Advent calendar. Daily gifts of word and sacrament of absolution and baptism. These are the gifts that sustain us while we wait. But my friends, our wait is almost Amen.